thank you for taking your time to be with us. I know you're busy and I really, really appreciate it. And uh, we're, we're really wondering if you could tell us about your work, what you do. My work, I'm, um, I'm an attorney by profession and I have my own private practice. I was with government until 2007. When I left government, I was um, previously the attorney general for the national government. And I left to open up my practice in October 2007. So this would be my 11th year of private practice, doing legal work, providing legal service for paying clients and also for non-paying clients where the case involves family law and maybe to a certain extent domestic violence. Uh, so can you tell us more about what you do on domestic violence or family law? Family law? We, I advocated for the passage of fa domestic violence legislation. It started in 2008 when the first draft was submitted to the legislature by the then um, Senator Magdalena Walter. And then we worked with her and the legislation and the legislature over the years and it was finally passed and enacted in November 2017, after nine years. Mm. So we worked hard, as you know, domestic violence is not a very um, easy to discuss, an open issue. So it was um, a challenge to get people to come on board, to agree to make it a criminal offense or an offense in Ponte State. Mm. So, why do you decide to become an attorney lawyer, or why do you decide to do this job? I was first a police officer for Pompey State, and then I, at that time, the pay was very small, and I thought I could do more not for the pay, but for the work that I was doing. So I eventually, I joined the national government, worked with foreign affairs. I was posted overseas in Fiji. I was exposed and I decided that I wanted to go to law school because I could do more for my government. And this is the best job that I've ever had. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Doing all the legal work, doing all the running around for it people who needed work done uh, mostly and my real interest is human rights and social justice that's what I work for. You, you only work on domestic violence and about environment issues climate change. Like a, yes like I said it's on human rights and social justice or environmental justice mm -hmm. so the, the mm -hmm. whole the whole scheme is about preserving uh, human rights and justice in these global development issues. You know, when these multinational corporations come in to do business, they don't care about how many trees they cut down. They don't care about how many people they dislocate or they're displaced. All they want is they want that piece of land so that they can make this. And there's no justice in this. Because you know why? At the end of the day, the money goes somewhere else. We don't get it. Mm. So what's the, um, what's the hardest part of your job? Ooh, good question. <laughs> Let me see. The hardest part of my job is when the other party is related because this island is so small mm -hmm. 
and the other party is either a cousin or a cousin's son or a daughter. It's so small that when I represent clients, people think it's my case, that I'm the one going against them, and they stop talking to me. And so that's the hardest part, telling them it's not my case, I'm representing this person, I'm doing this because it's not just my job, but because I think the person has the right to do this. Everybody has the right to justice or to go to court. Yeah. Whether you win or lose is not, the, not mm. the point. The point is that you are given that service so that you can have your day in court. Yeah. And that's what I do. That's, that's, the, that's a difficult thing because of our culture. Sometimes you can't go to court and fight over who gets to keep the, the child. Because one family is bigger, the other family is smaller, one family is more um, uh, comfortable, the other is not. And you know, when you're in a socially, um, uh, not socially, financially uh, disadvantaged position, people here think you don't have the right. So that's, it's, it's difficult, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to continue to raise awareness so that people understand that everybody has the right. Yeah. Have you ever solved any cases like that in uh, So with family cases, it's, it, it's a petition you file in court and the court and the court would, it's a petition you file in court. Both parties would come before the court. Most of the time, it's what's agreed between the parties. Recently, I had a client who informed me this week that she no longer wants the divorce because her husband and her talk and their three children is their priority. So they're going to get back together. So to me, I said, that's your choice. For the kids, that's important. And so I think that's solving the problem because now she's in a better position. She knows that if she runs into the problem again, she can come to me. Mm -hmm. I'm always available. The thing is, a lot of women here are afraid because number one, when you t when you say the court, oh, is this Utani Masak? Yeah. Is police? Oh, it's the Utani Masak. They think that when you talk about the court, they're gonna go to jail. Mm -hmm. People are so fearful mm -hmm. just of that notion. That's why women don't report. That's why women don't call the police. Mm -hmm. They call the police, the next day they go and they withdraw because they're afraid to go to court. I've had to talk to a couple women really just over and over and over again about the same problem, but they're, they're afraid. And I, you know, for me, I, I only advise on the law. So I think for that, they need professional help, not from a lawyer, but from someone who can counsel them to, to manage that fear so that they can move forward and seek the right kind of help. I think that there was one last question that we were talking about in the car. Because um, you clearly are so passionate about gender identities. Mm -hmm. um, but we know like a lot of like the government is very male. Have there been men in your life that have really said, Marstella, you can do this, who have been really supportive? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, there's been a few. Um, when I started with Foreign Affairs, my supervisor at the time was Jesse Ragelmar, Subomar, mm -hmm. a Yappies man. He's been, he has been so supportive even up to now. He tells me that beauty is only in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. So never judge by the cover of the book. Yeah, it is deeper than that because we always, we always feel that we, we're not enough, you know, that none of us are enough. A lot, a lot of us feel that it's not enough. What you have is what you have. 
So that's why you have to do with what you have and make the best of it. It's all about attitude. He tells me that success is where opportunity and preparation meets. Because if you're not prepared, when the opportunity comes knocking, you're not prepared, you can't grab it. So Jesse Raglamore, and then my former boss, former president, Joe Orosamon, he was, he was very supportive because that's why he appointed me to become the first female attorney general in the country. And when he appointed me, I walked in and he said, I know you can do it. I said, yes, I know I can. <laughs> Just give me the opportunity. Right. And then I became his AG and, uh, you know, and I, I was in a position where I was providing legal advice to the top men in the country. And I think that's, that goes to show that he believes in the ability and the capacity of women to make decisions. And then when I ran for Congress, I had some men who came up and said, congratulations, I hope you make it. You know, I had friends who came up and said, someone more I hope you make it. Let me know what, how I can help. And it's not women, men who came up to me. So the notion is that it's not the men who pull the women down. It's the women who pull women down. Because when we don't believe in ourselves, we don't believe that she can do it. Yeah. But we have to change that around. If she can do it, why can't I? Mm -hmm. That's how we do it. So for you young people, that's how it is. If she can do it, I'm going to do it too. So I want you to think that. If she can do it, I can do it too. And not... <laughs> And then you, you pull. Don't, don't pull a woman down. Always support a woman and always pull them up. That's my advice to you, young girls. Any more questions? Uh, that's what we, me and I, go prepare for you for today. Uh, really, really appreciate for your help. Thanks for the advice and thank you for your